Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are out on the water. We're gonna do some bass fishing. But before we do, have you ever had one of those days? You know the days I'm talking about, the days where it just goes from bad to worse. Man, I have been having one of those days. My day started in a jet boat in a river an hour and a half from here and just went downhill from there. Now we're on a bass boat on Chickamauga. We're gonna go out here, we're gonna catch them. I am catching bass today, but let me show you how this day started. It is easy to get caught up in the chaos of life. You know, daily life, even fishing. If you're on a busy lake, it can be chaos. It's not always relaxing. So today I just wanted to relax. So I hadn't been on the jet boat in a while, so I jumped on the jet boat, came up to a river, and today we're going multi-species fishing. Right off the bat, I was shocked to find there's almost no water. Look at this boat ramp. The end of the ramp was a foot out of water, uh, or a foot in water, but I was able to get the boat floating somehow. Probably should have had a camera going for that, but I got the boat off the trailer, there's supposed to be better flow this afternoon, so hopefully I'll be able to get it back on the trailer later. Uh, but today's gonna be multi-species. There's smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, striper, white bass, walleye, a few different species of trout, all your panfish, everything is in here. And I've got a bunch of finesse rods, whopper plopper, a spinner, a ned rig, a kitek, a popper. We're just going fishing. Let's get to it. Got something. It started out throwing a little spinner. Oh, that's a pretty trout. Really pretty. Let's get him back in the water. Thank you, buddy. Got another one. Oh, that's another nice trout. Hey, buddy. Check him out, he's gorgeous. Just a nice change of pace. But hopefully, see ya. Hopefully we get into some bass too. There's the little blue fox I'm throwing. When I get out on these rivers, it's just all about relaxing, having a good time. I don't care what bites. I'll take any species, any size. But this river, like I said, it's got trout, it's got bass, it's got striper, it's got walleye. And I'm throwing baits, you know, a 2.8 Kitek, a Ned Rig, an inline blue fox spinner. I'm throwing things that will catch a variety of species. Hopefully, we really get into them today. It's a nice perch. Such a pretty fish. He ate the Kitek, 2.8 Kitek. Look at those belly colors, just flaming orange. Such a cool fish. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, here's the situation. We've been on the water about 30, 40 minutes now. We've caught two trout and a yellow perch. I've seen about 15 other trout, three spotted bass, one largemouth. The largemouth was good too, like three, three and a half pounds, but he vanished and I don't know where he went. 
You know, it's so shallow. Hopefully you guys can see. So shallow, so clear. There goes some great big red horse. I've seen a bunch of suckers. Lots of panfish, of course. But here's my situation. It is so low that I barely got the boat off the trailer. See that riffle out there behind me? That riffle is about this deep. I can run in about this much, maybe a little more, six inches, five inches, but this is that deep. I might be able to jump out and float the boat down, which would get us into the next hole. I mean, we're gonna run miles and miles and miles and miles today. At least we were, probably 15, 20 miles. Supposedly, so way up river, there's a dam. All these rivers in East Tennessee have dams on them, all of them, or at least the vast majority. So way up, there's a dam that controls flow. Supposedly, they're going to turn on some pumps and this afternoon, this water will rise and I'll be able to get back. But if I go down that riffle and those pumps don't turn on, there is no getting back to the truck. Not that I could even put it back on the trailer right now if I wanted to. We're stuck regardless. So as I'm processing, I'm thinking, heck, I should probably just go for it. So I'm gonna finish out the hole that we're in. And then I think I'm gonna hop out of the boat and walk it down this riffle and we're just gonna keep on going. Nice trout on the kayak. This guy went for a 2.8 Kytec on a guppy head. Thank you, friend. So much fun. Hopefully we get into some bass, but I'll take anything that wants to eat. I almost made a major, major, major mistake. I've got a dead battery on this outboard. So, nothing. I'm turning the key. Nothing. Somehow, my key got left in the on position. I mean, it is dead, dead. So I looked, I have my, my NOCO, my booster. So I could crank it if I have to, but I mean, we have nothing. I didn't even think about it when I launched because the water was so shallow, I didn't need my outboard and I didn't want to spook what was ever in this one hole. So I just jumped right on the trolling motor. I am so glad that I thought I better start that motor before I drift down river and we've got nothing. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Let me process this for a minute. I think I'm, I'm gonna put it on the trailer because if the flow increases and I can't trolling motor back up river, we'll be in real trouble. So I think I'm gonna put it on the trailer, but let me process this for a second. Well, my decision is pretty obvious. By some miracle, I did get it back on the trailer. I didn't have a tripod with me today or I would have set it up so you could watch that train wreck. The boat ramp ends right here. That's just all rocky bottom, but got it back on the trailer. Thankfully the boat is light. I'm able to lift that front end back up onto the nose of the trailer, but uh, I'm winded, but I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue this adventure, just not in this boat. So I've got about an hour home We'll grab a bass boat and we'll just keep on rolling. So now you're up to speed. It is now almost 4.30 in the afternoon. We're on the bass boat. We are on Chickamauga. I don't care if they're big fish, little fish, as long as they are bass, we are gonna wrap this day up right. So I just came home, dumped the jet boat, hooked up the bass boat, rolled out to the boat ramp, grabbed a few rods. I don't know what's gonna happen but we're gonna wipe this morning off the books. Now, I had a ball catching fish, but we just never got to the bass. The river never even started flowing before we were done for. So, let's get to it. Let's go bass fishing. After the day I've had, 
that skinny little bass right there feels pretty good. That was on a Depths cover scat. It's a very odd bait. I had a buddy out on my boat fishing with this one day while I was throwing a Sanko and it was working. So I had to put some time into it. It's a very odd bait. I mean, it's called scat, right? You get the idea. Not much to it, but you fish it on a big hook. So I've got it on a, this is the medium size. I've got it on a four aught hook. And it's got a Senko type fall. But when I pop it up off the bottom, it's really erratic. It really darts up more than a Senko does. Uh, and it catches them. Skinny, skinny, summertime bass. Too much fun, that's a nice fish. Well, we're finally having the mixed bag that I hoped I would have today. Started the day out with some rainbow trout, yellow perch. Now we're catching some largemouth. Too much fun. Little guy, but we'll take him. That was on that three inch Largo on the Picasso. I've been experimenting with this a lot. The Largo, it's got a deeper belly than the Kitek does. So some of the heads that I normally use, even the heads I've been catching fish on lately, the blade doesn't turn very well. It's banging into the belly. But this Picasso where it's hanging lower spins really well under that Largo. I'm out here offshore, deep water, heavy current, nice fish. The problem is these fish have been beat up. There's a ton of pressure. So I've been catching them on bigger swim baits and all of a sudden they won't eat them. So I took that same Largo shad you keep seeing me throw but I put it on this owner ball head that's way heavier. And I went all the way down to six pound line. And with that light line, see the light line has less resistance in the current. The current doesn't pull it as hard as it does a heavy line. And then with that heavier head, I'm able to get down to bottom in 20 to 25 foot in current with a little three inch Largo. And I'm getting bites from fish that are otherwise completely shut down. I can throw the big bait, I can throw the spoon, throw all sorts of stuff at them, they won't eat it. They go to that smaller bait, there they are. Ooh, that might be a good one. Nope, just pulling hard on light tackle. buddy. <laughs> nice fish. Same deal. Still rolling that Largo. Nice 
work. I think we're gonna end it on that one. It has been a long day full of a lot of driving for me. But man, I feel like I redeemed myself. This day started out fun. You know, the first little while before I realized I didn't have an outboard was really fun. We caught some nice trout, caught a really beautiful perch. And I think we would have laid into some bass because I saw some. Uh, we caught those on a Blue Fox spinner and a 2.8 Kitek. And then when we got out here on Chick, started running around trying to catch some bass. Oh my goodness, look at this. They're boiling everywhere. When we got out here, we caught them, still going. Got them on the Largo Shad. And we got them on that Depths Cover Scat. All really fun ways to catch them. I don't know how I didn't catch that one. But it's just so interesting to me, you know, this morning catching them on a 2.8 Kitek, this evening catching them on a three inch Largo. It sounds like the same thing, right? A 2.8 and a three inch. But these two baits are so night and day different. Uh, my applications for them are completely different. The 2.8 is incredibly subtle. It's got that wide tail kick but the overall profile of the bait is incredibly subtle, very natural tones. And it's such a soft bait that it's just this methodical slow kick. Whereas the Largo, it's got this really tight, really aggressive, more like a shad or a fleeing bait fish, a really tight action. And then it's got a little tab under the tail. If you pull that off, then it gets more of that slower methodical action. Uh, but just all in all, it was a finesse day, but it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm glad that I was able to redeem myself by switching boats and getting back on the water. Nothing worse than getting out there and having equipment failure, especially when it's your own fault, but that's okay. We made up for it, caught some nice fish. Now I'm gonna head on home and get some food. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.